NASA is known as the Space Agency, but did you know that it is also active in our oceans? What is a space agency doing at the bottom of the ocean? Stay tuned for the original footage and to find out what the ocean floor has to do with the depths of the cosmos. Thank you friends and welcome. What do the ocean and outer space have in common? At first glance, not much, but although the two places could not be more different, they do have a few things in common. Both are cold and dark places where we humans cannot breathe and where the pressure can become so high that we are simply crushed. In both places we can float, we are virtually weightless and just drift along, and both places contain unsolved mysteries. We know that our oceans are full of creatures we have never seen before. It will be no different in space. If you agree, then be sure to give the video a thumbs up now. My goal is to get 500 likes for this video so that YouTube will play it more often. Thanks, friends. So, it is extremely important to keep an eye on the oceans, and who would have thought that NASA would be at the forefront of this? At first, it sounds strange, a space organization that cavorts on the ocean floor. Shouldn't the cobbler stick to his last, or the astronomers to their telescopes? It would be like me as a true Italian fan traveling to Mallorca and eating paella instead of Arancini. That's unthinkable and makes no sense, and it's best to stick to what you're good at. Okay, boomer. In this sense, I'd say buenos apetito or something, but seriously, of course it makes sense to leave the beaten track and look around to see what else is out there besides Arancini, and that's exactly what NASA does. It is known as a space organization, but it also conducts a great deal of research in the oceans of the Earth, which makes perfect sense because deep sea life can provide us with insights into possible extraterrestrial life on other planets. But before we look at NASA's concrete successes in the ocean, let's jump back in time for a moment. You may have heard the claim that we know more about our moon than we do about our oceans. This assumption is actually correct, as we have more detailed information about the surface of the moon than about the seabed. For example, the moon has been mapped in great detail and we have high resolution images and data about its entire surface. In contrast, only a small fraction of the ocean floor has been mapped at comparable resolution, because mapping the ocean floor is far more challenging due to the technical challenges associated with depth and extreme conditions. While technology for exploring the ocean floor has advanced, access to the deep and remote parts of the ocean remains difficult and costly. Deep sea probes and remotely operated vehicles have to withstand extreme pressure, darkness and often harsh thermal conditions. Historically, more attention and resources have been devoted to space exploration. In particular, during the Cold War and the space race, which led to extensive and better funded missions to explore the moon and to this day, other celestial bodies. Ocean exploration is scientifically and ecologically super important, but has received less public and political attention. All this led the Royal Society of Arts to write in 1957, the deep oceans cover more than two thirds of the Earth's surface, yet more is known about the shape of the moon's surface than about the ocean floor. Of course, we have come a long way since then. 23.4% of the seabed has now been mapped in high resolution using echo sounder techniques, but there is still a pretty big gap like in my brain when it comes to algebra or stochastics. Despite the progress made, a large part of the seabed remains unmapped. The Seabed 2030 project, for example, has set itself the ambitious goal of completely mapping the entire seabed by 2030. This is a truly ambitious project, and as we have seen with some major political projects, ambitious plans often fail, but I'm sure that the consortium of international researchers will succeed. Unless, that is, they find some kind of maritime field hamster or an extremely rare species of water bat somewhere in the depths of the ocean that absolutely has to be protected and prevents further research. NASA will certainly do a lot to explore the oceans and already has a few exciting projects underway that will also help us in space. NASA was founded on July 29, 1958, when US President Eisenhower signed the National Aeronautics and Space Act. The main purpose of NASA's founding was to promote civil aviation and space travel in the United States and to advance scientific research and exploration of space and the Earth's atmosphere. It was also to develop the technologies and vehicles needed for space exploration and aviation and to expand our understanding of phenomena in the atmosphere and in space in order to enrich the knowledge of mankind. These founding objectives were formulated against the backdrop of the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War and in particular the initial 
initial successes of the Soviets, such as the launch of the first artificial satellite Sputnik, contributed to increasing the urgency and priority of space research in the USA, which ultimately led to the founding of NASA. In 1978, however, NASA began to focus intensively on the Earth's oceans when it launched its first specially developed oceanographic satellite, Seaside. This satellite was able to collect data on sea surface winds, surface temperatures, wave heights, and other characteristics, and this data helped NASA to learn more about the oceans of our planet and their influence on the global climate. Of course, you might ask why NASA even started this dive. There are several good reasons for this. Many technologies, for example, that were developed for space exploration can also be used to explore the oceans. The extreme conditions in the Earth's deep oceans are similar to those expected in the oceans of other celestial bodies such as Jupiter's moon Europa and Saturn's moon Enceladus, and more so than one might think. By exploring the Earth's oceans, NASA can develop and test technologies and methods that will be required for future extraterrestrial missions. In addition, to the seaside satellite, NASA is also involved in numerous other projects to explore the oceans. For example, the NEMO missions at the Aquarius Reef Base off the coast of Florida house astronauts in an underwater research laboratory where they work in a simulated underwater space environment to prepare for future space missions. The Aquarius Reef Base is the only permanently manned underwater research facility in the world. It is located about 19 meters below sea level and consists of living and working units. The cramped and isolated conditions are similar to those on the ISS, the International Space Station, and offer optimal training opportunities. Leave me a comment and let me know if you would dare to work under these conditions for several days. Well, I have to admit that I wouldn't necessarily swap my studio here in the basement of the planetarium for such cramped conditions, especially since there's definitely no pizza there, although pizza frutti di mare would actually go down quite well, but of course, for astronauts, it's an important training on the way to space. So far, there have been 23 NEMO missions, during which astronauts have worked together underwater for up to three weeks and even had the opportunity to put on deep sea diving suits and get an idea of what spacewalks in space might be like. Research in the ocean can therefore advance space research in many ways. Scientists can develop more technologies and methods that can be used for similar conditions in space. Deep sea drones, for example, autonomous underwater vehicles that have to withstand extreme pressure and temperature differences can be directly transferred to the development of robots that can then be used in the oceans of icy moons such as Europa or Enceladus. These technologies have to work autonomously as radio communication is very limited at great depths and over long distances. Who knows, maybe autonomous systems will soon be swimming around in the subglacial oceans of Enceladus looking for small marine field hamsters. It is also of great importance to study extreme life forms on Earth. The discovery of life forms in extreme environments, such as the hydrothermal vents in the Hadal Zone in the Mariana Trench, shows that life can exist and flourish under such bizarre conditions. Why not in space too? These findings expand our understanding of where and how life could exist in the universe where conditions similar to those on Europa and Enceladus could prevail, for example, as both have liquid oceans under their ice crust. On Europa, this ocean is located under a 10 to 30 kilometer thick layer of ice, while on Enceladus geysers that eject water vapor and ice particles into space have been detected. It is assumed that hydrothermal activity takes place at the bottom of these oceans, similar to the hydrothermal springs on Earth which are rich in life. These heat sources can provide energy necessary for the existence of life. And the water vapor fountains on Enceladus and the ice layers on Europa contain simple organic molecules and other chemical compounds known as building blocks of life. These molecules could form more complex organic compounds under the right conditions, perhaps life. All of this sounds very promising, which is why NASA is launching the Europa Clipper mission in October of this year to investigate the potential habitability of the moon Europa. I will be live streaming the launch at the beginning of October, which will be an absolutely historic event. If you don't want to miss out on such news, then subscribe to my channel now because then you will get a notification and help me immensely. So subscribe and activate the bell. Thank you, friends. With this mission, scientists want to find out whether the conditions on Europa can support life as we know it. In 30, the spacecraft will reach Jupiter and be able to carry out numerous tests on site. Europa Clipper will be equipped with a variety of scientific instruments, including cameras and spectrometers, to enable the surface to be imaged and analyzed in high resolution. There will be radar equipment to study the ice layer and the water below it, as well as thermal instruments to measure temperature differences and identify potential hydrothermal activity. Much of this has already been tested by NASA in the oceans and is now being applied in space. 
and that's just the beginning. Imagine that we will soon be able to send cryobots to Europa that can autonomously eat their way through the ice cap and dive thousands of meters into the ocean. Once in the ocean, cryobots could take water samples and analyze them on the spot. They can search for biosignatures such as organic molecules, chemical metabolic products, or even living organisms. Built-in instruments such as mass spectrometers and microscopes could then immediately examine the chemical composition and possible biological activity in the samples, collect data and transmit it to the surface via a cable or acoustic communication from where the information could then be sent to Earth. The robots would have to be able to withstand the high pressure and the dark freezing environment and store data about the environment. So the best place to start developing such high-tech devices is in our own oceans. And the two places are also comparable. The ocean on Europa could reach a depth of up to 100 kilometers, which is much more than here. The Mariana Trench is only a measly 11 kilometers deep. But scientists estimate that the hydrostatic pressure at the bottom of Europa could be between 130 and 260 megapascals. The pressure at the bottom of the Mariana Trench is around 110 megapascals. So in terms of pressure, the two locations are perhaps comparable, except that it is even more extreme on Europa. In any case, both places require robust technologies that need to be researched. For example, there is the deep sea submarine limiting factor, which can dive deep into the Mariana Trench and withstand depths of over 10,900 meters. That's not enough for Europe, but the researchers still have a little time to develop a suitable interplanetary submarine. In the Valkyrie project, which stands for Very Deep Autonomous Laser Powered Kilowatt Yo-Yoing Class Robotic Ice Explorer. I love short and clear research projects. Scientists are already researching researching the feasibility of a laser-powered cryobot that would be able to melt through the ice layer on Europa to explore the ocean. The Valkyrie bot uses a high-power laser operated by an autonomous rover on the surface, and in the IceFin project, researchers are testing a small torpedo-shaped robot that can drill through ice layers and dive into the subglacial ocean. It has already been tested in Antarctica to test the technology that could one day be used on Europa, so it will be a while before we get there. But what will we see then? Write it in the comments, because I find it really exciting to think about what kind of life we might see and what it will do to our understanding of ourselves and the life we know. Maybe life on Enceladus will seem strangely familiar to us. After all, we also came from water. Maybe it will be so alien that we won't have the words to describe it. In any case, the discovery of life in the solar system, apart from our own, would have an enormous impact on the probability of life in the entire universe. We could then assume that life is completely normal and that little bubbling aliens are the norm in other star systems. Let's just hope that NASA continues its successful ocean research and that it will then use the findings to venture into space and finally provide the answer to the question, is there really life out there? As soon as there is news to report, I will of course inform you immediately. So don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell. And if you're interested in more terrestrial research, then click on the video below. Something really strange has been discovered under the Antarctic. Something is slumbering under the eternal ice that has taken the scientists' breath away. And don't forget to take a look at the Astro Shop. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, friends.